I want to hear what God has to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, every time we come to the Lord, the Lord's table, the Lord's house, he, He's got something He wants us to receive. Amen. I, I'm coming to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 37. Psalm 37. 23 through 24. Preach a message. It's going to help somebody today. I know that. It's going to help somebody. I help all of us. Amen. Help all of us. Keep going. Psalm 37, 23. If you're there, shout amen. 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 The steps of a good man are ordered. That means they're predetermined. God knows what he's doing in your life. Did God know what he was doing with Ruth and Naomi and Boaz? If God can tie all that together, he's got your life under control, okay? Amen. And we're going to learn even Wednesday night just even more about how God had everything under control the whole time, all right? So don't think you're something special, you know, I mean, that God can't fix your problem because he can. Steps of a good man, they are ordered or predetermined by the Lord. <coughs> He delights in his way. Verse 24, I love this. Though he fall, who? The good man. Whose steps are ordered, predetermined. God knew you'd fall. He knew you'd mess up. He knew you'd, you'd stumble. Though he fall, though that good man or good woman fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The Lord upholdeth him with his hand. With the help of the Holy Spirit this morning, I'd like to preach a message for a moment or two upon the thought of don't give up. Amen. Say that to your neighbor. Don't, don't give up. up. Say it to me, Randy. Don't give up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Randy, will you pray over this word today? Father, we just give you a moment to pray this morning, Father God. We ask our hearts that you will open our hearts to receive this message that we would give it out to those that we need. We ask you that you just anoint the Lord. Yes, Lord. We come against any distractions, Father God. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Randy. <coughs> Amen. Excuse my cough. I'm still getting over a pretty bad cough. But don't, don't give up. Don't give up this morning, church. Don't, don't give up. Do you remember when your children first started walking? I, I, I remember that. And uh, Josiah was our first child. And I remember many times I'd grab his little hands, he'd grab onto my index fingers, and I'd just walk him around the house. And I'd lead him in circles. I'd lead him around the grocery store. Uh, I'd lead him just anywhere we went. I mean, I was proud of him. That, that's my first child, my, my first son. We call him the firstborn son. He's not the oldest, but he's our firstborn. Amen. So, uh, but uh, I was teaching him how to walk. It was an attempt to teach him how to walk on his own. And as Joe was learning to walk, there were times when he fell. There were times when Josiah lost his balance. But in all of that time, I never once got mad at Josiah for falling down because I understood that he's a baby. Yeah. He's just learning how to walk. <clears throat> Regardless of what age you may be this morning, whenever you came to Christ, the first thing that God did was he put his hands upon your hands and he began to teach you how to walk. As God held your hands, you started praying a little bit. You started reading the Bible even though you didn't understand much about it. You, you just started reading it because you knew that's what you ought to do or ought to have done. You started going to church. You even started to tell your friends or your family, your loved ones about the, the change that took place in your heart and all the things that God had done in your life. And you were excited as a newborn baby. But as you continued on in your walk with the Lord, you lost your balance and you fell to sin. You scraped your spiritual knee and now you're hurting. I thought I knew how to walk. I thought I was doing so well. 
but now I've fallen to the ground and I'm struggling to pick myself back up. Can anyone relate to that this morning? I know that I can. Even now, as a pastor, I'm still learning how to walk. There are times that I stumble. There are times that I trip and fall. But in spite of all my missteps, God continues to pick me up off the ground. And he says, don't quit, son, but keep trying to walk. Can you say amen? Have you fallen to sin? Are you struggling to get back up? If so, I want to remind you that God is not mad at you. God is not furious and upset with you, but he wants to grab you by the hands once again, pick you back up, and show you how to walk. Don't give up. Don't quit on God. Don't throw in the towel, but keep on going in the name of Jesus. Do not give up. Can you say Amen. Number one, I want to tell you not to give up because His mercies are new every morning. Amen. Don't give up, church, because God's mercies are new every morning. One of the first things that happens after a Christian falls, and especially newborn Christians, after they fall to sin, that enemy comes and he begins to whisper how terrible you are. He says you're such a failure. You'll never be able to live for God. You're a phony. You're a fake. You're nothing but a hypocrite. Nobody else has the struggles and the problems that you have. What's the point of even trying? Has anybody ever felt like that before? You've heard those voices of the enemy? Look at you. Nobody else struggles like you do. But that is Satan's job. We must remember that. It is his job to condemn us and to put guilt and condemnation upon us. But there is good news for failures like you and me. God's mercy is renewed every single morning. Lamentations 3. 21 through 23 says, This I call to my mind. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad for the mercy and faithfulness of Jesus Christ. His mercy and his faithfulness is available to me every single morning. God knows that I do not deserve it. God knows that you and I don't deserve his mercy, his forgiveness, and his compassion. But yet he never ceases to love and to care for you and I. I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that there are people here today who have been struggling with these very things I have been mentioning. You thought you were doing so well. You started going to church again. You started to worship God again. But then something happened and now you feel as if God is so upset with you that he no longer loves you. Now you wonder, what am I doing here? I don't even feel God more. Well, I've got news for you. You're not the only one who's ever stumbled. You're not the only one who's ever tripped up and fell. I know you feel guilty. I know you feel worthless. But may I remind you, when you woke up this morning, his mercy was renewed unto you. He's not running low in mercy. His mercy's not on but he's got an abundance of compassion and mercy that is available for you and I here today. Can you say amen? amen. Well, what do I do, Pastor? I, I've fallen and I feel like I can't get up. Here's what you do. Pick yourself up and lift up your head. Quit walking around with your head down saying, oh, I'm so worthless. I'm a piece of trash. I'll never amount to anything. No, no, no. you got to realize I'm a child of the most high God. Do you remember on Wednesday night, whenever Bo after uh, Ruth proposed to Boaz, Boaz said, Ruth, I'm 
more blessed now than I was in the beginning. You remember that? Oh, here's Boaz. And he says, Ruth, it blessed me when you were gleaning in my field. It blessed me when you had a desire to glean in my field. It blessed me when you obeyed not to go by the men's servants, but just stay by the ladies. That really blessed him. Amen. Oh, it blessed me when you uncovered my feet. Amen. It may have scared me at first, but I realized I'm more blessed. Amen. You see, we would think with the mindset that Ruth was the one that was being blessed. Look at the abundance that she has. Look at this man that she had wanting to marry her. Oh, but Boaz said, no, no, no. You're not the blessed one. I am the blessed one. you got to realize you need to quit walking around with fear of God. And I'm talking about a fear of God that he don't love you anymore. That he's upset with you. That he doesn't care about you. That's nothing more than condemnation. It's a lie straight from the pits of hell. You gotta square your shoulders today. Lift up your head and say, I confess my sins under God. He's gonna be faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. I may have failed, I may have stumbled, but I'm not gonna lay here in self pity and discourage me. I'm giving up in the name of Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror because He loves me. You're a child of God and His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life as David told us in Psalm 23 Hebrews 4 16 says let us therefore come boldly say boldly boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help of need you don't have to approach your heavenly father with fear or intimidation but you can come before him boldly and say daddy father Abba father I failed you I'm sorry but you know what happened your great advocate your mediator between you and God Jesus Christ says father that's okay they've been cleansed they've been forgiven they've been made pure they're righteous in my sight that's what happens whenever we confess our sins unto Jesus that's what he is there for cast your cares upon him cast your concerns upon him cast your fears upon him because he cares for you yeah. we can come before him boldly for mercy amen how many of you you ever got in an argument with your spouse Everybody except for Tom. Amen. That's because he just listens to it, I guess. <laughs> He's like, I ain't fighting. Nah, I'll learn that lesson. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all know I'm playing, huh? Amen. Man, you get in the fight. You arguing back and forth. Now, with me and Miranda, anytime we get in an argument, she's always wrong. Right? <laughs> she is. Oh, I thought she was out with the kiss. My bad. Okay. All right. I'm always right. All right. Amen, Diane. I, say, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, it's on YouTube now. Amen. Amen. Go get Miranda mad at you, too. Amen. I'm on her side. Let the women remain. Amen. Amen. We're good at that. You end up finding an argument with your wife. How many men know what it's like, even though you feel like you ain't in the wrong, you just apologize to get all the mm -hmm. whining over with? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, I'm so sorry. And Miranda says, You ain't sorry, I know you. <laughs> well, if I wasn't right all the time, amen. <laughs> amen. It's a struggle, amen. <laughs> But then you know what I did? I said, baby, look, you want me to go get you a taco? <laughs> no, I don't. All right, fine, I'm gonna get me one. All right, get me one too. If you'll be nice to me, I'll get you one. She's like, get one and bring it home and see how I feel then. So I go and I get her a taco and I come back, she eats it. After she eats it, she's in a better mood. Amen. Sometimes we try to approach God thinking, 
Lord, I failed you. I better do this. I better do that. I better do this. I better do that. I better, now I need to fast and pray for a few days. I need, to, I need to do this. I need to read my Bible. I need to do this. There's nothing wrong with that. But you need to realize, you can approach God boldly. Amen. 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 we got to realize that, that sometimes we don't have time to try to make things right. Sometimes you can't make right. All you can do is boldly come to the Father and say, Lord, I'm coming to your throne. I'm in need of your mercy. I'm in need of your grace. I slipped up. I fell. But here I am. Cleanse me, oh God. Amen. And God says, you're cleansed. It's over just like that. Amen. He's not like us. Go ahead and I'm going to give you a few hours to earn my favor back. Amen. amen. We say amen, but really that's not the mindset we live with. Amen. Because we, we walk around with guilt. We walk around with, with fear. Oh, God must, he must, oh, he, I'm not like everybody else. He, he, he loves Marlene real good, but he don't really love me real good. Oh, he, he blesses Randy and, and Randy's always in, in the presence of God and oh, just touch with the spirit of God. Man, God won't do that for me. We got to realize God don't have any favor. He's no respecter of person. All you got to do is come humbly before him. Lift up your head. Oh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Maybe you're thinking, well, I don't need this word today. You wait, you may need it this week. Amen. Hello? Amen. <laughs> Not me. I'm perfect. No. I'm the closest thing to it. <laughs> Man, you just wait. You wait. You're going to need this word. Amen? Amen? So if you don't need it today, you, you just tuck it away in your mind. And you remember it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay? Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 4 through 6 says, But God who is poor in mercy? Rich. No way to go up there, huh? Amen. <laughs> God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. You know you're loved by God. Yeah. Amen. You're loved by God. Ruth was loved by Boaz. Amen. Here's, here's Ruth going over to Boaz, like, I'm going to comfort, uncover his feet. If y'all think that's weird, you shouldn't be here Wednesday. <laughs> I'm going to cover Boaz's feet. Will you cover me? Will you cover me, Boaz? Amen. She didn't even realize. Man, I'm asking Boaz to be my husband, but Boaz was the one that said, man, I've been longing for this. I love you. I want to redeem you. I know about you. I've been thinking of this stuff myself. Amen. Oh, yeah. Verse 5 of Ephesians 2. Even when we were dead in sins. Amen. On your worst day, God hath quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. You're not saved by anything that you do. Well, I joined the church. Am I saved? They don't mean you're saved. I got baptized in water, though. They told me my sins were floating around in the water when I got up. That don't mean nothing. Like Sister Lena says, you can go in a dry center and come up a wet center. Ain't that right, Lena? Amen. <laughs> oh, no, there's only one way to be saved. You are saved by the grace of God. Amen. By grace. What is grace? That's God's unmerited favor given to you and I. We didn't do anything to deserve his love. We didn't do anything to deserve his forgiveness and his mercy. But he loved us while we were yet sinners. Verse 6 of Ephesians 2. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you fall into sin, you were not created to lay there and wallow around in your guilt and in your discouragement and in your feelings of God doesn't care about me. No, God created you when you when God saved you, He placed you right next to Him at the at, with Him in heavenly places. We've got to take our seat with Christ once again and say, I'm not made to sit on the ground wallowing around at how bad I was or what I did. Get up in the name of Jesus and be seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yeah. As verse 
mercy is available for you, so don't give up. Amen? His mercy is available. Praise the Lord. Number two, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Amen. Say amen now. Amen. Don't give up on God because he's not going to give up on you. Romans 8, 38 through 39, For I am persuaded, Paul said, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is one of my all-time favorite verses in the Scripture. It lets me know how I am wondrously loved by my Redeemer, Jesus Christ. I know from personal experience that God doesn't give up on His children because there's been times in my life when I've wandered. There's been times in my own life whenever I went astray, but yet He never gave up on me. He always dealt with my heart. He always conducted things trying to bring me back to where I needed to be. Has God had to correct me? Many, many times. Has God had to give me a spiritual spanking? Many, many times. But he did so to bring me home. And he did so because he loved me. Amen. God didn't give up on Naomi after 20 years in Moab. But he brought her back to the place, to the very center of his will in which she could be blessed once again. King David had an adulterous affair with Bathsheba and then he tried to cover that affair up by murdering Bathsheba's husband and don't get any worse than that can you say amen but in spite of it all there was a longing in David's heart and he cried out in Psalm 51 1 through 2 have mercy upon me O God according to thy loving kindness according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin if you fall into sin if you stumbled in your walk with God do what David did go to God and say cover me in the multitude of thy tender mercy forgive me cleanse me wash me Jesus, if you've confessed your sin to God, then you need to move on from the guilt of it. Man, this is good preaching today. This is stuff you're going to need. I'm telling you. Gee, Peter would have liked a message like this before he saw that, heard that rooster crow. Amen. If you fall into sin, if so, confess it to him and move on from it. Turn away from it. Am I saying that God doesn't care about your sin? No. I'm not saying that at all. Absolutely not. It was sin that put Jesus upon the cross. It was sin that caused God the Father to have to hide his face from God the Son. That's why Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sin is deadly. Sin is evil. Sin is wicked. He that commits sin, he that lives in sin is of the devil, as 1 John tells us. But there's a difference between committing sin and living in sin. Amen? There's a difference between someone that falls to sin and then somebody that doesn't even see their sin. Amen? There's, I, there's been times where I've committed sin, but I didn't live in it. There's been times I've fallen, I've failed, I may have done something wrong, but at the same time, it was my heart's desire to be freed, to be loosed, because God didn't create any of his children to stay in bondage. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Does God just tolerate our sin? I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying this. As long as there is a desire, a sincere desire, within your heart to live your life for Jesus Christ. He will continually work to bring you back into the place in which you need to be. Amen. The problem is there's a lot of people that really don't want to be back in the will of God. Amen. They just, I'm going to do my own thing. Is such a person saved? Absolutely not. Amen. Amen. How do I know I'm saved? 
and, I, and I've got this struggle in my life, that struggle in my life. Here's how you know. The Spirit bears record with our spirit that we are the sons and the daughters of God. What does that mean? That means if I'm a, if I'm a son or a daughter of God, there's going to be a desire to please my Father. There's going to be a desire in your, your heart to live for God and to please Him. Amen. During my freshman year in high school, and well, it's only 11.36, I got, I got a little bit of time. I'll get you up by 12. You ain't going to burn your roast. <laughs> <laughs> During my freshman year in high school, I found some sunglasses, and if you've heard the story, you're going to get it again. You read the Gospels more than once. You sing Amazing Grace more than once. And you hear this more than once. During my freshman year in high school, I found some sunglasses in the classroom. And I was hungry. I'd say, that's shocking, huh? You know, I was hungry. And uh, I sold them to a girl in the class for $2. Why $2? Because at the North High snack bar, there was Dorito, a bag of Doritos was only a dollar. And a Pepsi uh, out of the fountain was only one dollar, so you get a lot for two dollars in, in high school back then. And so I sold those glasses to a girl, and I got my two dollars. A couple days later, or a couple days later, I ended up in the dean's office of the high school, and they said, "William, what do you know about some glasses?" And immediately I was like, there were some glasses that had been sitting there for weeks on the counter. <laughs> Uncle Ray knows where I'm going, huh? <laughs> they were sitting there for weeks. Honestly, I thought maybe somebody had lost them, forgot about them, whatever. So I just got them and I picked them up and I sold it to this girl for two bucks. Well, there was another girl that wanted those glasses and I didn't sell them to her because she was ugly. And the other girl was pretty. You know? <laughs> Well, the ugly one's the one that turned me in. Right? <laughs> well, anyway, I went to the dean's office, and the, the dean is like, William, do you know about these glasses? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never seen those before. <laughs> That's crazy. He rolls his eyes. He's like, oh, my goodness. All these kids in your class saw you do it. And I'm like, I didn't do it. You can call my dad. He'll come down here and stick up for me. Oh, yeah. They call dad. Dad goes down there. You know, I'm just telling dad. Oh, dad, they're picking on me. You know, they're doing this. And they're accusing me of this. I didn't do it. Lying. Amen. Dad gets down that school and he looks at the North High Dean. He said, you know what you are? You're nothing more than a tin horn dictator. <laughs> After we left the school, I said, Dad, what's a ten horn dictator? He said, I don't know. I was watching Bonanza one time and Hoss said it. <laughs> <laughs> that principal, that dean looked at me and he said, You need to make this right with your dad. And my dad's right there. My dad looked at me. He said, Boy, I don't want you lying. You tell me the truth. Did you take those glasses? Yes, Dad. No, I did. Uh -huh. Yeah. I took them. You know what happened? I ended up in court over those $2 glasses. Oh. Don't make that crazy. <laughs> so here I am standing before the judge. And the jury, this was over at, what's that, the, the courthouse right by KMC, the juvenile courthouse. And here I am in there over stupid glasses. And the judge looks at me and she says, William, what, what happened? I, I told her I found these glasses, I sold them, and I lied about it. That's why I'm here. This is stupid. And all these other kids are in there, the jury of the kids, because the kids got to decide my sentencing. Some of those kids are in there for vandalism. They're in there for smoking pot. Some of them are in there for ditching school and doing all this other stuff. I didn't do any of that junk, but I may have ditched school a few times, but not a lot. But, you know, I'm not like all them. I just stole some stupid glasses. And the judge, she looks at me and she's like, okay, William, um, is this your parents? And I can see my dad. My dad's like got his head down. like, oh. And they're like, what do your parents do for a living? Oh, they're pastors. 
No joke, my dad started like dissolving. Like he started like, you know, like a slug just slipping down his little chair, just like, where is he? You know? And uh, to make a long story short, did I fail my parents? Yes, I did. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Did I drag their name through the mud? Amen. Did I make them, did I make my dad look bad? Yeah. Amen. Him calling that guy Ten Horn Dictator didn't help him either, though. Yeah. Man. But I let them down. I got to finish the sentencing. They sentenced me for that. 40 hours of community service at the Goodwill for $2 glasses. Amen. I should have got me a kid lawyer or something like that. <laughs> Terrible sentence, you know. You thought Trump's guy on the news this past week got a bad sentence. I, I was going with a real bad sentence. You know what happened, though? And all of my shortcoming, my parents still loved me. Did that whip me? Oh, yeah. But you were a teenager. You didn't care. Amen. He whipped me. Mary's saying amen. I feel sorry for you, Seth. <laughs> no. Oh, but daddy... Did he whip me? Yes, he did. Did they work me? Yes, I, yes, they did. I had to clean the whole wood pile. And on top of that, I got suspended from school. Y'all didn't know that about your pastor, huh? I hated school so much, I was glad when they suspended me. I'd rather work at home than be in school for eight hours. But in all that, mom and dad never gave up on me. Amen. How I many you know what it's like for your kids to do stupid stuff? But do you still love them? Do you still care for them? Is it your desire to bring them back into a place of restoration and fellowship? Of course it is. Who God loves, he chastens. Oh, I was being chastened. But now I'm pastoring. Amen. Going from lying about $2 sunglasses and going to court and embarrassing my folks to pastoring. Thank God for grace. Amen. 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 Where would you be today if it wasn't for God's grace? Amen. Amen. For God's mercy, they are renewed every single morning. Don't give up on God because he will not give up on you. Mom and dad still love me. They still worked on me. Amen. And God is still going to work on you. Amen. Brother Randy, would you come to the piano this morning? I got one last thing. I want to tell you not to give up on God. Don't quit. Don't give up. Because you can live for Jesus. Say, I can live for Jesus. I can live for Him. Philippians 4.13, Diane's favorite scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What a promise for us. That lets me know that God will give us the power to do whatever we need to do. He'll give us the power to live for Him. He'll give us the power to walk upright. He'll give us the victory and the power over sin that we desire to have. Don't give up on God. He's not going to give up on you. Amen. You can live for God. You can do all things because Christ will strengthen you. Don't let that deceiving voice of the enemy keep you from serving God. I mean, oh, the devil's a liar. Throughout the years, <clears throat> I've seen many people believe the lie that they can't do it. Can't live for God. So you know what happens? They go back to their old lifestyle, go back to a life of sin, and they just stay in it. All because believing the Lord. Quit trusting in His mercy. Quit trusting in His word. If you feel that way, I want to let you know you need to believe God and not the devil. You can live for Him. You can do all things through Christ. You can't do it through your own power. You can do Christ though. I can live for Him because Christ will give me the strength to do so. I can get rid of that habit. Amen. I can get rid of that addiction. 
because Christ will give me the strength to do so. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. With every head bowed today, all the eyes closed, if you're here today and you say, Pastor William, I felt like just giving up lately. This is a word for you today. Don't give up. Don't give up. God will help you. God will give you the strength that you need to live for Him. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'd just like some special prayer. Would you just lift up your hand today? Amen. We'll pray for Uncle Ray. Pray for Patrick today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't give up. Amen. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. He loves you. He died for you. Amen. You're not a piece of trash. You're not junk. You're the apple of his eye. Amen. It blessed God when you came here today. He was lifted up with joy, excitement, when you decided to get up and to go to the house of the Lord. Amen. It blessed him. And it's going to bless him even more whenever we surrender everything to him. Hallelujah. Church, let's all find a place to pray this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. Father, thank you. Jesus, you are Jesus. Working in the righteous man the fall seven times, but they get back up. I worship you. Lord, we thank you for your restoration of power, your forgiving power. God, touch Mary, Marlene, Melrose, and Gene, Diane, Uncle Ray. Father, today we just give you everything. We confess our sins to you, our faults, our shortcomings. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of Jesus, God, touch Patrick. Lord, we come to you today humbly asking you for your mercy, your forgiveness, your strength, your grace. Just touch Patrick today. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, touch Uncle Ray today. God, cleanse us today. Oh, Father, we can live for you. We can walk with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, give strength to these that are here today. Give strength to these that are here today. We can walk with you. We can live lives of victory, fulfillment. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we're singing about grace. God's grace did much more abound. Oh Father, we love you. We praise you. You never give up on us. Oh Jesus, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touch my surround. I worship. 
here, isn't he? Amen. 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 He's a he's a sin forgiver. Amen. 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 He's a filth cleanser. Amen. My God, that's who he is. Amen. How do I know that? Because he's forgiven me. Amen. Amen. He's forgiven you, Uncle Ray. I don't think I heard her testimony tonight. That happens to me. Amen. Amen. And I mean it so bad. But you need them tongues, I know it's for me. Amen. I know I was saved, but I was been at night and thought, what's wrong? I go to church, I pray, but I can't feel like I used to pray. So I will say to her, for a sense of morning, so I come back to all my strength. Amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. The, the devil's a liar, Uncle Ray. Amen. One thing I've noticed over the years is that enemy a lot of time he will go to people I'm like, you don't do this like you used to. Here's what his trick is. He's trying to get people to think that that was their ceiling back then. Amen? That was their plateau back then. God says, I say the best wine for the last. I want to do even greater things than I did back then. Thank God for what he did yesterday, but I serve a God of yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Uncle Ray, you keep loving Jesus. You keep living for him and serving him. Like we say, even when I don't feel it, he's working. Amen. Amen. It was so good to have everyone here today. Uh, Patrick, God bless you. Glad to see you come on in here today. Amen. And uh, Matthew, it was good seeing you again today on your birthday. Happy birthday, Matthew. He said, Lord bless you. And uh, y'all just have a wonderful day. Remember, tonight at 5 o'clock, I'm expecting a great time in the Lord. Brother Tom will be ministering tonight. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. And we praise you for this service. We thank you for this time we've had today. I pray, Lord God, for those that are just struggling, discouraged, that they would not give up. God, that they would just get up. Move on in the name of Jesus. A righteous man falls seven times. Falls 77 times. 777 times. 7 million times. It don't matter. Righteous man falls and he gets up. God, touch your people today. Be with them as we go our separate ways. Give us traveling mercies. Keep us from drunk drivers, high drivers, texters, bad drivers, distracted drivers. God, you keep your hands upon this flock. Keep your hands upon them. Keep them by your power. In Jesus' name, let everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.